The sun begins to dip low in the sky over Concord, North Carolina and Lowe's Motor Speedway. Where tonight, NASCAR's Nextel Cup drivers will enjoy two very different qualifying sessions. First, we'll qualify cars for the Nextel Open, 31 cars to attempt to start that race. And then, a very unique qualifying session for the Nextel All-Star Challenge. The 18 drivers that are locked in will qualify in a unique format. It all leads up to tomorrow night, Stock Car Racing's All-Star Night. When all the stars come out, no points, just pride. And oh yeah, there's a million dollars at stake. Expect things to be fast and furious. One happy winner. Everybody else gets to wait for next week and the Coca-Cola 600. It'll be a big night with some changes. Musical acts added. Train will be here. The Red Hot Chili Peppers will play during the break between segments. And we appreciate what Nextel and NASCAR have done to bring this weekend to you. But it all starts right here on the newly repaved and reconfigured Lowe's Motor Speedway, uh, where, Daryl, drivers have had a lot of trouble, especially handling turn four. Well, when you go out uh, for the short runs, qualifying, for instance, and I think tomorrow night the restarts and uh, those kind of things where the tires are cold. These tires are hard. They need heat in them, and it takes laps. Uh, the guys, I watched them go out. First time they go down the corner, they go, you know, they fighting with the wheel. And the next time it's a little smoother, and by the third lap's pretty good, but we got to qualify, and you don't get three laps. Larry, it's an impound race for the Nextel Open, and then it's a qualifying session with a pit stop uh, for the Nextel All-Star Challenge. So two very different scenarios here. Yeah, the open qualifying is pretty normal, but all 31 cars are locked in. But that's a short race, only 30 laps. So I think qualifying is so important to get that track position, especially with the harder tire. And I love the Nextel All-Star Challenge qualifying. Three laps, and it includes the pit crew. They are a big part of a car that sits on the pole or qualifies mid-pack. Yeah, I said you don't get three laps. You don't get three consecutive laps uh, to get that heat in the tires. Get that pit stop. So you'll see all that tonight, right here on Speed. Chad Chaffin from Smyrna, Tennessee, has stepped into the number 61, vacated by Kevin LePage. And in Jeff's decks forward, he's going to try to make... This is the Nextel Open that we're qualifying for. Now, this is a backup car. Yeah. Chad crashed hard in practice, and they did not get back out on the racetrack. This is the first lap this car is seeing. Yeah, he tore the number 61 car up big time over on the back straightaway. I mean, wadded it up. So this is standard fare. These cars practiced earlier in the day. Jeff Green was quickest. Denny Hamlin second fastest. Two laps against the clock. The faster of the two laps is your qualifying time. Yeah, Calamity Corner's been turned four. I mean, everybody, trucks, everybody's had a lot of problems off of turn four. Uh, I think that will improve, though, Larry, now that the sun has gone down. I think we'll maybe not see quite as much activity in that turn as we have earlier today. Yeah, turn two and turn three is still pretty much in the sunlight, but turn four and turn one, total shade. First lap for Chapman, 30.899, 174.7. So he actually picks it up by quite a bit on lap two, which doesn't surprise me, Darrell. You talked about it a while ago. You get heat in this little harder compound tire. And what we mean by a harder tire, it just doesn't have as much grip as the softer tire package we've been running for the last couple of years. Yeah, they don't come in as quick. Uh, laps is what makes these tires work. Here's how you get into the next Nextel Open and the All-Star Challenge. Top 50 drivers in last year's points and the top 50 in this year's points as of March 13th, two segments, 30 laps. And then the race winner and one driver voted by the fans will advance to the All-Star Challenge. And you see the drivers that are eligible for the 90-lap challenge. Let's check with Dick Bergeron. Well, ordinarily qualifying is a 
kind of a calm sort of affair. Not much happens. One car goes out at a time, does the best he can do. But this could turn out to be quite a bit of a different qualifying session. And that's because of that extremely hard tire. The truck series just went on the racetrack and their guys tried to qualify and a bunch of them either spun out. Even Bill Lester crashed his truck. He's a veteran, really knows what he's doing with it. You heard about Chad Chaffin in practice, not so much today, but earlier in practice on this new surface with this new tire, a bunch of guys met the wall. Even Jimmy Johnson, who has won four in a row here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. So cross your fingers that your favorite gets through okay. No problems. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're hoping for. May not happen. Some folks may find the wall before this is all done and over with. Next up, as you look from our DLP cable cam, which is now called uh, Camarama. Cam Camarama. Camarama, cool. Car is getting ready to go. Kirk Shelmerdy next, then Scott Wimmer, then Reed Sorensen. Here's Matt Yoakum. Kyle Petty knows all about chasing a victory in the All-Star event. You almost won this back in 92, but for you this weekend, this could be huge, huge dollar signs for a number of reasons, and you already got a million dollars earlier today. Yeah, you know, Kurt Busch and his foundation, uh, they donated a million dollars to camp to build uh, the Kurt Busch Superdome, and that's a sports arena we're building a camp, and we we couldn't have been more blessed today than uh, to be associated with Kurt Busch and his organization, so that's pretty special. But then Coca-Cola came up with a program, uh, Vote for Kyle, Reward the Victory Junction Game Camp, and it's my Coke Rewards program. We're running the my Coke Rewards program. Uh, uh, Coke car here, I guess Coke Dodge Charger here at the, at the All-Star event, and if we're voted into the All-Star event, uh, then the camp makes money. We're, we've already raised like $250,000, $275,000. The more people that vote for me uh, to try to get me into the All-Star event, uh, then hopefully we can make them enough money off this deal. We're, we think we can make $750,000 to a million dollars off this thing, and that'll send a lot of kids to camp. And I know it's a little bit strange, but uh, a vote for me is a vote for a kid right now, and that's kind of the way it is. So we've been out campaigning all, all week trying to get kids to come to Victory Junction. Well, now the king ran for governor a few years ago. Kyle, he's running for office again this weekend. Big dollars for the camp. Pretty neat promotion, and it really has vaulted Kyle up into the top five in the voting for what second driver will transfer to the All-Star Challenge, but what if he just wins the Open? What happens then? Somebody else will get in. <laughs> Speed's presentation of Bud Pole qualifying from Lowe's Motor Speedway is brought to you by Turtle Wax. For an eye-catching, head-turning shine, Turtle Wax your car, you're going to wow somebody. Kirk Shelmerdine, former championship crew chief who has had some success as a driver in the Cat Daddy Ford. <laughs> Cat Daddy. You know who I hear say that every now and then is Dale Jr. He'll talk about a, somebody being a Cat Daddy. I don't know if it had anything to do with his car or not. In this case, uh, it's an alcoholic beverage. Really? Yep. Oh. It's Whoa, a, Kurt, hang on. Oh, buddy, hang man. On. It's not going to hit anything. And remember, every Ooh. car that's attempting to qualify for but this race will be in the race. Larry, that car is, I mean, I know they run them up high, but it isn't going down like they're supposed to. Look how high the nose is. And it, it's. It, I noticed when he come to get the green, you know how they normally get down in the corners or, or they'll get down some. That car just stays stuck up in the air. You'll be able to see it here. That car went in the corner, looked like it was on ice. Well, you get that little slide right there, and you start. You just get behind on your steering. It happens so quickly, you can't keep up with it. Lucky kept it off the outside wall in turn two. Now he's going to idle his way around for a second lap, just to post a time in case someone else has trouble. But he's just down on the apron and yeah, oh, logging a lap. Oh, Cat Daddy ain't going to be purring too good today. Cat Scratch Fever. Cat Scratch, yeah, that's another, that's a good song. Dick Bergman. With one of the real veterans of big league stock car racing, and particularly this weekend's events, Kenny Schrader, 12 times top four finish combined in the Open and in the All-Star Race, three times second in the All-Star Race, three times second in the Open, but you've never had to run on a set of tires like this and on a brand new racetrack surface. What's it like out there? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, they did a good job of paving the place. And uh, Goodyear brought a good tire. I mean, we're going out to qualify here, 30 something laps on them. We're on our fastest and testing at uh, lap 60 something. And uh, the groove's already, you can run up in the middle. I think it's going to be a wonderful show. A good combination between this paving and what Goodyear brought. The voice of experience has just spoken, Mike. Thanks, Dick. Kirk Shelmerdine is uh, credited 
with a lap of 49.06 seconds, 110 miles an hour. But as Larry points out, he is in the show. Scott Wimmer next out in the Aero Exhaust Chevrolet at Morgan McClure Racing. I maybe did a little wiggle on him down there. Third open appearance. Started and finished 15th last year. In watching this group in practice, as you mentioned, it's an impound race, and there was only one hour and a half practice session. Remember, this is a car that is not locked into the Coca-Cola 600. They have to qualify on time. Even though they're here to try to perform this weekend, they used that practice session earlier a lot to work on qualifying for next week to try to get into the Coca-Cola 600. Boy, the car's just, and, and you're right, Larry, and, and these guys have been working hard. I mean, I, I really think this team is, is is on the verge of getting back some of the uh, some of the consistency they had years ago. Good lap, Darrell, 29-49. He's the quickest of three so far. I think Scott Wimmer's helped this team, and I think Larry McClure is determined to turn this thing around, and he's, he's really done a good job. And that's uh, a tenth and a half better than he practiced. Second lap is quicker by seven one hundredths, 29.42. Yeah, I lost it. Freaking slicker. And what we need to explain is the situation we've got here. You heard Kenny Schrader talking about the tire. You've talked about the repave. Is they had to repave this racetrack. And when you repave a racetrack, it has so much grip. Well, the soft tire that we've been running for the last couple of years has a ton of grip, too. And they did the original tire tail here. There were tire temperatures in the corner over 375 degrees. A tire will not take that. So well, they couldn't dig the asphalt up. We've got what we've got there. So Goodyear went back, created a tire that didn't have as much grip. They were able to take some of the rubber off the tire that dissipates heat as well. And that's what we got, which is a lot like a tire we ran for years, Daryl. Well, I think part of the problem, too, Larry, it's here last year. They two fiascos there last year. Good blunt of the blame. Most of the time they were blaming the tires because we were having tire problems. It was real combination of tires and track. So gear came back this time and they said, boys, we're not going to eat like it last year. You can rebel now. Reed Sorensen on the speedway. 29.58. That second so far, he was eighth fastest in practice. And I'm drivers about to get in with some power to the rest of the year. Uh, so I was small spoilers. They said, we want to put the driving back in the driver's hands. Well, you know what they really wanted? They wanted small spoilers and these hard tires because that puts the driver in control. Yeah, I think he got a little bit too loose off too, Larry. That tower. That went from being a seven to lost about uh, 1,200. But the car looked good. Nice and sucked down to the racetrack, and it shows how smooth this race is. I haven't heard anybody complain about the race. Everything's much rate. But there's a factor here this weekend contributing to a lot of what is going to be issued tomorrow night, and that's small fuel cell and uh, a new tire. Let's check with Dick. She jerked car out, get towards front of the back. You were a little quick in practice today. Save the sun for qualifying. I think we've done a tough two and they look like they were pretty far away done. Scott body made changes, and uh, you know, I was surprised we went. We were as competitive as we were. I think the car is pretty good. I was pretty happy with it in a race trim. Um, we'll just have to see what we got here. I'm pretty admit that I'll be in real quick order back, but I've been forward, been dead. But we'll have to see what's going on. It's really important. Uh, I think it's important to hit a glass. Be sure that everyone's out of the chart. His teammates on the track right now, Dick uh, Hoyer. First lap Hoyer for the point. Remember, this is an inbound race. So as we say, about what you got. So the car might qualify well. Cars may be way too loose to qualify, but guys hope that that'll pay off the race uh, tomorrow night. He picks up 29.87, but that deal not exactly what he ran in price in the, the day earlier. No, and I, I think you're going to hear him say he was just the car looked really good to me. And here's Matt, the fastest man so far. Scott Wimmer, now you walked up, and what were the first words you told me? Yeah, that was a pretty scary lap, but a uh, good lap for the Aero Exhaust car. We were really working on our 600 stuff, so that was a pretty good lap. It was pretty scary, though. It's real slick, and uh, I think it's going to get a little bit better. I don't think that'll hold up, but a uh, good lap for us, and give us a lot of momentum going into the 600. Was there any time for you to shade down in the four, the exit? Yeah, you definitely can feel it. I went into one, and the car felt real good, and as soon as I hit that where the sun was, uh, I got real loose, but... Uh, we kept it out of the wall, and uh, hopefully we'll bring this car back. And I think it's going to be a good race car, so. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. Here's the fastest man in practice, Jeff Green in the Haas Automotive 66. His time in practice was a 29.32, which that time would be about he a has better than what uh, Scott ran just a little bit ago. Well, remember Mike Lister drove his car last year, and it was bad fast last year. Booty Barker, he got a pretty good setup for over here, even with the new pavements. He's bad fast again, looks like. 29.08. 
That's a whale of a lap. Top of the heap. 185.6 miles per hour. Man. And remember, this is an impound race. So if these guys are on full-blown qualifying, uh, they'd knock a few more tents off of that. I really believe we get back over here next week. They race here this weekend. And we get back over here next week for the 600. You're going to be surprised how fast these cars go. Dropped off a tenth on his second lap, but Jeff Green is quickest. Next till open, qualifying continues here on speed. White flag is out for Dave Blaney in the Bill Davis Caterpillar Dodge. First lap of 30.23, that puts him fifth. He has slowed down quite a bit from practice as well, because earlier today he ran a 29.97. I just believe when you you got to tape them up to qualify. I just believe you put new tires on, tape them up on a race setup. You're just going to obviously be way, way, way too free. And I tell you what, when they drop the green flag for that open tomorrow with only 30 laps, you better have your act together because that's a short race. It gets a caution with 10 to go, and those final 10 laps will be 10 green flag laps. 31 cars, 30 laps. Wow. Second lap for Blaney. He is quicker by half a tenth. He is still fifth. Dick Bergeron is with the man who was second fastest in practice. And that would be Denny Hamlin. The question for you, can you be quickest of everybody and win the pole for tonight? Uh, I think we got a chance at it. Um, our, our teammate, JJ, was really good uh, right behind us in the speed chart, and he goes out last. So he's going to have a little advantage over us. But, uh, you know, the FedEx Chevrolet was really good in practice. See him race run, so I'm pretty excited about it. If we can qualify... Uh, in the top five, we're gonna have a chance. How's the hand? It's good. I uh, got the stitches off. Uh, well, the stitches still in it, but uh, not bandaged up anymore. And uh, they said all it needs now is some air and time. Oh, you're gonna get a lot of sympathy when folks see that hand. Wow. Good luck to you tonight, Danny. Thank you. Is that not amazing? Uh, 19 stitches and just tore a just plug out of the side of his hand. Yeah. Oh, wow. He has done. I'll tell you to run Richmond, Darlington, win Darlington. And uh, be, have a wing wounded like that, it's pretty amazing to me. And I tell you what, he's sitting 13th. Here we go, here we go. Mike Garvey in the Marathon 51's got it in the fence. You know what? They can repay this place all they want to. But three and four has been bad ever since I've been coming here, and they ain't fixed it. A lot of damage to the right rear of that car. We always blamed it on the humpy bumps over the tunnel. Oh, you know, all through three and four and all four, we always blamed on the humpy bumps, but uh, no, it's it's just three and four and it's cause of sunshine on it. I think, watch this. This is earlier today in truck qualifying. Eric Almirola. And he had a fast truck. I mean, he had a truck that could have won the pole. And all in the same spot. Ron Hornaday. Kyle Chrysoloff. It's not a lot of damage, but here comes a guy that really yeah. paid the price. And he Lester. had a shot at the pole. Bill Lester was fast in practice, had a shot at the pole. This cost him a start in the race tonight. And he had started 102 consecutive Craftsman truck races. Front row for tonight looks like this. How about that? Mike Skinner, 25th career pole. He looks pretty mean there next to Aaron Crocker. Uh, but. Well, you know, it's, on, it's fitting. Just think about Janet Guthrie. Got inducted, inducted into the Talladega Hall of Fame a couple of weeks ago. She's been over here at the Speedway last couple of weeks promoting the race. She was responsible for the first sellout of the 600 here back in 1976. So here you are. Got another gal up there on the front row. Pretty neat deal. And I heard Rick Allen and Phil Park and Parsons talk about how hard that group has worked the last month yeah. and a half. A good, great run for Aaron Crocker. And there are the trucks waiting to race later tonight here on Speed. This is Kevin LePage in the State Water Heaters BAM Racing Dodge. He is not going to complete that second lap. His time on the first lap, fifth quickest. Walks up the racetrack. He's going to actually skim the wall up there in turn one and two. Well, you can see a little sparks. I think that car bottomed out, Larry. Can you see a little bit of stuff, sparks flying out from under? Just a little bit, yeah. But he and was definitely up there in no man's land. Apparently, you know, I haven't heard anybody saying about it because I thought they removed that. Yeah, he's got that Darlington stripe here at Charlotte. <laughs> Make that number 26. Uh, I 
thought they fixed that bump in turn one, but I'll be darned, some of these cars don't look like they hit that and move up the track. I heard some of the drivers that tested here say it still has a slight bump slight, down there. Slight. All right, Kenny Schrader on the speedway. Matt Yoakum is with our fastest qualifier so far. And Jeff Green was also fastest, Mike, in final practice. Is this package, Jeff, more forgiving or less forgiving? Uh, I don't, I, I, you know, we talked about earlier, I think it's, um, you either hit it, you don't. I think if you're off just a little bit, it's going to show a lot. Um, I, I like we've seen here already in this, in this qualifying session, a lot of guys just missed a little bit, and it shows a lot on, on, the, on the stopwatch. So uh, just thank goodness our Haas Chevrolet is really good tonight. But in those guys, we tested two cars here a couple weeks ago like everybody did. This is actually the, the, the worst of the two that's really close, but this car is driving really, really good. If it runs tomorrow night like it does tonight, we're going to have to bring it back next week for the 600. The bump gone? Uh, it's still there, but uh, those the shot guys and everybody at, at, on my race team has really done a good job to help that. Still there, but it, uh, we're able to help that. I heard somebody on the, on the show earlier saying about how characteristics come back when they, you know, and, and, and they're right. The bumps are still here. They're actually a couple more bumps down there in three getting in there that wasn't there before. So uh, it's still sharp. You still have to drive it the same way. I think the tire situation, the track situation, it's going to make for a better race, but it's just a little bit edgy right now. We're going to let you slide out of the way or you're going to get bumped by the cat car. Mike? Thanks, Matt. Jeff Green driving for the team that came within 400 feet of winning this race last year. Ken Schrader, second fastest, 29-392 for the Air Force Ford of the Wood Brothers. Schrader's only one of three Fords that'll be in this open race with all the Roush cars being in the All-Star Challenge. We only have Ken Schrader, Hermie Sadler, and Elliot Sadler that are in Fords that will be in the open tomorrow night. And of course, Elliot, he came with just in a few car links of being in the uh, race tomorrow night and not having to run this race. That's right. Because he finished second in this race last year. Furniture Row Racing, Chevrolet of Kenny Wallace. Kenny was 22nd fastest in practice earlier today. Kenny's made a few shows in this car this year. They're attempting to run the full schedule. Pretty smooth off turn yep. four compared to most. This will be his 11th All-Star weekend, and he's fourth quickest with that lap. Pretty solid lap. That's a pickup of about seven or eight tenths from what he ran earlier today. Actually, that car looks down in the track oh. pretty good, and uh, it's not wiggling and flopping around. Uh, not a bad run for the And you know what? He knows that was a good lap. Smart. 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 Very smart. Darrell, that's the first car I've seen that didn't look loose all over the place. Yeah, I'm, I'm same way. If anything, it looked a little snug. It looked really comfortable to drive. Well, since you're in the show, yeah. probably a good way to approach it. I think so. Jeff Green, Kenny Schrader, quickest coming up next. Last year's Nextel Open winner, Brian Vickers, along with Jeff Burton and Denny Hamlin. Speed's presentation of NASCAR Bud Bowl qualifying from Lowe's Motor Speedway is brought to you by Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR and proud sponsor of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the number eight car. This baby here looks pretty good too, Mike. Maybe it's cooling down enough that it's helping all these race cars. Uh, Ryan Bickers right now looks like on a pretty good run and the car is really sticking to the bottom of the racetrack. Of course, he won, the, uh, won this race last year in a very controversial finish, I might add, but yep. he did win it. 29.56, that puts Brian fourth quickest. It's a pickup of about three tenths from what he ran in practice. We'll have more on that finish tomorrow night during our pre-race. I've spoken to Mike Bliss and we'll talk with Brian Vickers tomorrow and get them to look back one year at what happened on the last lap. You know, Darrell, you mentioned something earlier that we really have not expanded on. We've been talking about the track, we've been talking about the tire, and you mentioned about the small fuel cell being here. Uh, this is the same fuel cell, 13 and a half gallons, that we run at Daytona and Talladega. Brian Vickers picks it up actually a little bit on his second lap. And, and that was kind of a decision that was made by NASCAR, I think, well before Goodyear sorted the tire situation out. As you mentioned, we had a disaster here both races last year. If the fact that we were tearing tires up, they couldn't run more than about 35 or 40 laps. And they put the smaller fuel cell in there where they would be forced to pit sooner. Let's have a look at that last lap from one year ago. Mike Bliss leading, Brian Vickers second. Gets to him coming out of turn four. You saw a little fire out of Bliss's car, which told me he lifted the throttle at that, and Brian got a run on him. 
And this is kind of like, uh, who's, who's your favorite driver? If it's Mike Bliss, he just got dumped. If it's Brian Vickers, the zero car turned in front of him. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Vickers got the win. It was allowed to stand, and he went into the next All-Star Challenge the fall. In the irony, essentially the zero car, now the 66 car, is actually somewhat a fifth Hendrick team. All the information is shared. They run Hendrick engines. They're just in a different shot. But Larry, to follow up a little bit on the fuel cell thing, uh, I, I mean, I don't, under, I don't understand it. I understand. I, to me, that was a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, did something that we, it just adds another element to the race that it's another unknown. It's another part of the race that we didn't really need to have to deal with. Now we're going to have to make 15, 16, 17 pit stops in a 600-mile race. Well, let me say this. If nothing changed from October, the track didn't change and the tire didn't change, you know what? We were going to have a caution every 35 laps anyhow. But we've got a new surface. We've got a hard tire. I feel like they could have called an audible and said, okay, boys, put the big fuel cells back in there. Jeff Burton in the singular Chevy, second fastest now at a 29.31. His second lap was just a little bit slow. A little slower. free. Just, it unnerved me a little bit. It um, wasn't, you know, I generally lose, but it just kept me on, kept me on edge the whole lap. Uncomfortable. Uh, that's yeah. that. You got to have some comfort there to go fast. And if you're on edge and you see these other guys all spinning out, it's going to make you a little apprehensive. Well, for a car that was too free, that was a heck of a lap. A 31, second quickest. Yeah, this. One other thing quickly on the fuel cell thing. Some of the guys said, well, now that we're here and we've tested, we're here for these races, uh, we really would not, we really don't want them to change it back because we've done all our testing with the smallest fuel, with the smaller cell and the weight difference. So uh, who knows what's going to happen? I, I really, uh, I really wish they hadn't done that. Denny Hamlin. Second fastest in practice in the FedEx Chevy. Boom, top of the board. Boy, he stepped it up there by over a half a second from what he ran in practice, 28.96. And you know what? It looks like he's going to call it off. But now, Larry, as these speeds continue to pick up, this was the fear. And this is where I had to give NASCAR a little bit of, I got to cut him some slack. One of the things that nobody ever knows is, is just how fast we're going to run over here when everybody gets serious. We're starting to find out. And it's in the speeds are picking up. Dick Bergeron. I'm chasing Sterling Marlin down. Hey, Sterling, it's your turn. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Guys won this open race four separate times. We've been talking to a lot of people. We've overheard a lot of people say that they're uncomfortable in their car with this hard tire. How are you doing with all your experience? Well, it's, it's a handful. Uh, you know, testing was really a handful, and we brought a different car back. This car seems to be a, a lot better. Uh, a little more grip. I don't know if it's just more rubber on the track or a better car, but uh, you got to be pretty careful in the first couple laps. And uh, what we saw this evening, our car would really get tight after three or four laps. And uh, real free the first couple, and then you get tight. So, you know, we're down on the springs, trying that stuff this weekend, and uh, see what checks out. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you. Matty. Dick, Brian Vickers currently fifth in qualifying for the Open, but you have to be pleased with your pickup of about half a second. Uh, yeah, you know, we were we were loose all through practice, and uh, we, were, we were still way too loose for qualifying. Going out early with the sun on the racetrack definitely didn't help, uh, but I think we'll be good at night. When the sun goes down, it's going to be really tightened up a lot in the test, and uh, hopefully we can put this GMAC Chevy in victory lane. And, Mike, you can see more and more shade on the racetrack. Remember, he finished third in the All-Star event last year. Yeah, that's had quite a night for himself. Robbie Gordon, 29.53, seventh. We'll talk more next weekend about his run at Darlington last Saturday night, but I talked to Robbie last evening and uh, why he stayed out so long on those worn tires. He was trying to put the whole field a lap down and win the race. He didn't much care about a top 10 finish that he certainly would have had if he'd stopped with the rest of the leaders. He was trying to win it. And he's pretty much w wasting fuel and tires on his second lap. I think it all started over in turn two, so that first lap is going to be the lap of record for Robbie Gordon. Yeah, he intended to run two. But then his intentions got uh, altered as he came off a turn two. So the Jim Beam Chevy, number seven, sits seventh. Got him a black car this weekend, pretty sharp looking. I liked his ride last night. He had a, a <laughs> twin hull catamaran 
with the twin 572 big block supercharged Chevys, 1100 total horsepower. Yeah, it, it was a frightening sounding. And he got your attention. Oh, here we go. It, Turn four it? again. Here we go up the hill. Casey Mears, sorry, uh, Mike. Almost. Golly gee, he took off. Now this is took just coming like, to take the green, which probably will hurt his first lap. Took off like Robbie Gordon's boat right there. Hydroplane. Robbie says he gets that thing up on plane, the hull hardly even touches the water. He said it is capable of. Now that tells me that he's probably done it. I'm running over 100 miles an hour. I bet it would. It's a big old yeah. boat. It's got a big old motor in it, too. Kind of catamaran deck boat. It's cool. 11th for Casey Mears, 2988. Respectable, considering what he started with there. Yeah, he took off. He just drove it into turn three, coming to get the green, and that baby would not turn. Up the hill he went. It cost him a lot of momentum, but he's looking good on this lap. Yeah, that's exactly what he ran in practice, so definitely anticipate he should pick up on the stopwatch on his second lap. A little wiggle right down there in the middle of turn three and four. Yeah, he's having trouble getting in the corner. He just really had to back out early, and even then he had trouble with it. Better. Seventh at a 49. For the Haviland Dodge. That's a pretty good save there, bud. Good job. <laughs> Donnie Wingo is crew chief. <laughs> well, I was way too loose in. And we agree. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Jeff Burton. <laughs> and, and Brian Vickers. Sign language. Shaky. A little shaky there tonight. How about it, Matt? Well, I'm caught up with the fastest man so far. That's Denny Hamlin. So how would you describe your lap on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, it was about an eight. I mean, I, I probably could have ran a little faster, but the way it looked, whoever doesn't bobble is going to be good. So I chose the conservative route and try not to just make any mistakes, and that was the most important thing. And, uh, you know, if it gets us top three or four, uh, it'll at least give us a shot for the race tomorrow. Well, he's currently fast. Now, Larry Mack, uh, take out your number two pencil. Track temperature in the sun, 98. In the shade, 94. And Matt, that's versus almost 130 degrees when these guys practice right in the middle of the afternoon. You can see the shade right here in turn four. It's Tony Raines in the DLP 96 car. Goes to complete his first lap, 29.53. That puts him eighth quickest. Been pretty happy and pretty impressed with Tony's job stepping into this race car. Well, for it. one thing, it's it's not easy to just jump into a car mid-season after somebody else has wheeled it for five races. And, trying to pick up but yeah, I mean the results have been there the, and the, uh, the qualifying efforts have been there and, uh, I think that Roger Staubach and Troy Aikman should be well pleased and I know talking to Fleet Lopez the crew chief this morning they are really using this weekend as a brand new team with a driver that has not been with them that long as a test session preparing for one of the bigger races of the year the Coca-Cola 600 next week Second lap on rain, slower by just a couple of hundreds. So Tony is eighth. Coming up, David Stremme. I didn't drive hard enough. Hermie Sadler, Mike Wallace, and Sterling Marlin. You don't hear that often. Half the field has had their turn at Lowe's Motor Speedway, and Denny Hamlin is quickest. Jeff Green is second. That's a reverse of their speeds in practice. The third fastest man in practice, J.J. Yaley, will be the last to qualify this afternoon. Here's Dick Bergman. With Joe Nimichek, and he was 10th fastest. Front row, Joe, what say? You got enough stuff in that hot rod to get the pole tonight? Man, I don't know. You know, it's uh, it's definitely been difficult here at Charlotte uh, with Goodyear's, the harder tire, the new asphalt, just lacking a lot of grip. You know, we struggled being really loose at the beginning of practice and then got really tight, but... Uh, I'm proud of this whole U.S. Army team. Uh, you know, I crashed one over here testing. Didn't even make a lap and, and backed one in when we were here testing a few weeks ago. And then we had a pretty decent test after that. So we tried a lot of new stuff here. Engineering staff's been working hard. And uh, I think I've got a pretty good race car. Now, our whole group has been watching you for a very long time. And our make on you is that when the going gets tough, you get really good and really fast. Let's see. Mike. Thanks, Dick. If uh, something has revved your engine, call Wind Tunnel's Fired Up line at 866-W-TUNNEL. Anytime during the weekend, leave your message and then tune into Wind Tunnel. As Sunday night at 9 on speed, Dave Despain interviews Kevin Harvick. Ah, uh, the rookie. 
Might have to call in, give, have a, little, you, have give you called, a little brief. Have you called the fired up line yet? No, but I need to. Spain, he, gets, he pushes my button every now and then. <laughs> Here's Dick. You know what the rules are around here? Fergie. With Martin Truax. Hey, your guys did pretty darn well on Wednesday night. Your pit crew, tell us what happened. They won. Yeah, they won what? <laughs> the pit crew challenge. All right. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, they're, uh, they ought to be proud. You know, that was uh, a cool thing for them. They don't get much recognition out here. So it was good for them to win, good for their confidence. And uh, I know when we hit road, uh, pit road tomorrow night, they'll be on their game. You going to wear the sunglasses when you go off for your time trial? No, I don't think I'm going to need them. Uh, Maybe on maybe going into three I might need him a little bit, but I got a dark shield on my helmet, so <laughs> we'll be good. All right, thanks, Mark. Mike. NASCAR uh, checking the track for possibility of debris, and we should resume here in just a minute. You know, Larry, that's a great opportunity for a pit crew to pick up some extra change too, because that, that paid a lot of money. And I know when I had a team, and I think most of these team owners, uh, you know, that's that's kind of like a bonus for those guys. They go over there, and it's on their time most of most time, and I don't know what that paid, 60, 70 grand, didn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, the overall competition paid about 70,100, and then you had the individual competition, front tire changer, his tire carrier, rear tire changer, his carrier, the fuel man, the overflow man, the jack man, paid about... $10,000 a piece for those guys. But that's what's great about the All-Star Weekend. It really involves the teams, the crews. We know the crews make a difference every single week as far as the outcome of a race. But Wednesday night, you had their competition. Tonight, in the Nextel All-Star Challenge qualifying, the pit crew will play a role in it. So it's just neat that the crews play a big role in it. You know, and I just want to take a second and thank our Fox cameramen for their diligence. Boy, well, they, not much happens around here. They give us great it gets pictures. Missed. They really give us great pictures. Let's go downstairs. JJ Yaley, you were fast in practice, fast enough to take the pole tonight? I sure hope so. The Interstate Battery Chevrolet has been really, really good. Uh, we were good testing. Uh, teammates real fast. Hopefully, uh, we can take advantage of going out a little bit later. But, you know, I was watching something earlier on speed. All my fans, you know, if there's all 40 or 50 of them, they need to go and vote for Kyle Petty. That's a really cool thing to do for Victory Junction game, trying to get some kids to go to camp. So go vote, vote for uh, Kyle Petty, get in this thing tomorrow. Hopefully I'll put the thing on the pole and I'll just win my way in. With this hard tire and the new surface on the racetrack, how important is being abnormally brave? <laughs> I don't know about abnormally brave or abnormally stupid or just not knowing any better, but uh, <laughs> someone said earlier that Jeff Gordon was talking about how fast uh, the, the open cars were running in practice saying that, uh, you know, he just didn't think that was real smart running that fast the way the cars were handling on the racetrack. So uh, I'm going to, if, if something happens, I'm really fast or something happened and I have a little dent in it, I'm just going to blame. Uh, I had yellow stripes on the back. I really wanted to go fast and I just didn't know any better. You know why I asked you that Edward, a great question? Yeah, I, I've had bouts with it before, but uh, I know that uh, I, I've hit the fence here before. No, that's not why I asked you. Oh, I was going to say, because softer walls aren't really that much softer. No, I've watched you race a, race a sprint car, and I know you're abnormally brave. You do have that in your back pocket for tonight. I don't have any back pockets. <laughs> <laughs> no back pockets. <laughs> David Stremme on the track, 29-46, seventh fastest. Picks it up a little, but stays seventh. What a great gesture by J.J. Ayler, telling everybody vote for Kyle. That is pretty awesome. Pretty, you know, and there's a guy that he, I'm sure he'd love to be voted in, but he knows voting Kyle in is for a great cause. But David Stremme had a great qualifying run at Darlington last yes. week, qualified fourth. Ganassi actually has three cars in this open. Right now he doesn't have a car in the All-Star Challenge. Stremme is actually the fastest of the three Ganassi cars. Well, I like Yaley's chances. He drew the last qualifying spot, and many feel that is an advantage. What I like is I've noticed that Hamlin and Yaley, particularly and Tony as well, because he's a part of that team. But when Hamlin runs good, Yaley runs good. And they've both been running good a lot. Yes, they have. Hey, there's Red Rocks on the back of uh, Hermie Sadler's car and disc jockeys Ace and TJ up on the nose. And here's our Fox tracker in use for Sadler. Red Rocks, very popular restaurant in uh, Huntersville, North Carolina. A lot of NASCAR folks uh, are frequent diners there. Yeah, the menu actually has different NASCAR personality, their favorite dishes on the menu. Yeah. Ron Herbert. In fact, there's Ron in the black T-shirt. Want to be on a car? Write the check. That's there you go. And there you are. It's pretty cool. They're uh, they're on a truck tonight too. They're all over the hood of uh, uh, somebody's uh, somebody in the truck race. 
That's a cool little area right there. I like going Burkdale up there. Village. Burkdale Village. Yep. Burkdale, it's a lot of great uh, stores, shops, restaurants. Nice neighborhood atmosphere. Yeah, it is. Me. It feels good. It's yeah. kind of driving into Disney almost. You got Red Rocks on one corner and Dressler's opposite and Starbucks next door. and It's pretty cool. Now, Hermie Sadler will be 16th quickest right now out of the 19 cars that have qualified. He picked up about four tenths on lap two. Yeah. Uh, that gang is on Boston Reed's truck tonight. That'll be fun to watch. Mike Wallace in the Pro30.com entry. This is a Dodge. Mike right now running full time in the Bush Series for James Finch, Mark Reno in the one car. The Bush Series, they're off this weekend. When they start back here next weekend, 16 weeks in a row for the Bush Series. Wow. This is a car uh, out of Ricky Ware Racing. Originally out of Texas, the Wares have competed in various levels of NASCAR throughout the last decade or so. And boy, that's wobbly yeah. bobbly there, Daryl. Yeah, the old piece is, uh, as, they, as they like to say, sawing on wood in there right now. And he gets really, uh, that first lap down into turn one, she took a little run up the hill with him, too. There he goes again, way up there. Stopwatch pretty much reflects it, and I think he's going to be done with this. He has all he can stand 30 62. That puts him 18th quickest. You know, Mike, you talked about the voting, and you heard J.J. Yaley talk about it. As of Wednesday, the fans had casted almost 100,000 votes. That's over a 500% increase in votes from last year. Right now, the top three vote-getters in that vote in alphabetical order, not how their votes are, Kyle Petty, Elliott Sadler, and Martin Truex Jr. that actually was the fan vote last year. <laughs> Kyle's got his work to cut out to beat Martin Truex. I can just tell him that. Sterling Marlin has won the Open four times. Michael Waltrip, Jeremy Mayfield, twice each. And Michael Waltrip, uh, in 1996, I think it was, when he transferred, he went on to win the next All-Star Challenge race. Brother Darrell came over to celebrate with him. <laughs> I'll never forget. He, they, the race is over. I'm riding down the back. I said, hey, guys, because Earnhardt was leading the race. Earnhardt and somebody got together. Terry Labonte, maybe. Earnhardt and them were up there fighting for the lead. I called the guys. I said, uh, who won the race? They said, uh, Michael. I said, 10-4. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> How'd he do that? Tell you what, guys, one yep. thing I noticed right here, off in the turn three on Sterling Marlin, that last time through there, 197 miles an hour, wow. 196 with a little bit of break going off into turn one. Yeah, and we wonder why they bobble when they go into turn three. Ninth fastest on that lap. Do you know how fast that corner's coming at you when you're doing 190 miles an hour? Do you have any idea? That's almost 300. I like something happened. Motor. Ooh. Really got the vibrate. Real, real loose. And you know, I go back to Darlington, Sterling, right as, as happy hour started final practice, they had an engine problem as well. Yeah, Daryl, what? It's almost 300 feet per second going off into that corner. All I know is, is you better not blink. No. And you better have that car handling pretty darn good. That's why drivers are uncomfortable when they get there and they got to give a little right before they go left. We talked about the top of the show, how important qualifying is, is Elliott Sadler, the 38 car man, and finished second actually in the All-Star Challenge last year. Did, has not won a race though, so he's having to go into the open. But remember, an impound race, if they indeed check Sterling Marlin's engine out, he'll have to go to the rear of the field. And it's a short race. Uh, he'd have a hard time working his way to the front, I can tell you. Whoa, Whoa, here we go. Not going to hit nothing, goes. it doesn't look like. Let's oh. see, get some straightened out. Oh, don't let up, don't let up. Nope, it's going to hit. Oh. Almost had it. All the way down the back straightaway. The uh, the red M was already screaming there. Yeah, the I'm all right. I just yeah. was trying to get a good lap down. That's for man. Elliott was fourth quickest in practice earlier today. See what happens here. He's just coming off a two over there. You can see the car start to walk with him. And uh, it looks like when they do that, the guys just cannot catch up with him. We saw, uh, uh, saw one of the other cars earlier have that same issue. 
Look at that red M. Yikes. Oh, add insult to injury. Yeah, Kurt Shammerdine we saw, you know, have trouble over there coming off the two. Kind of got to walking with him like this. Boy, look how quickly that thing spun around. Of course, he's doing what you're supposed to do. Keep the wheels turned left. Keep it locked down. Now, this will be in real time. I, I tell you, that is a sick feeling when that thing comes around like that. Almost had it at one time. Elliot is okay. Climbed out of the car. He's fine. But now, what about pulling out a backup car? Well, again, if they pull out a backup car, the first lap that race car will see will be when they drop the green flag tomorrow night. Uh, you know, there's something to some decisions here, but remember, Lowe's Motor Speedway is a racetrack that every team tested. I've got to believe they tested two race cars, so at least if they do pull the backup car out, the car has seen the racetrack probably. And he has no time, so... Uh, at the rear anyhow. At the rear anyhow. I, I'd, I'd have to look at the car again on the right side. I'm not sure it got all that much damage. Uh, easy to say going down through there at 180 mile an hour, it hit something, but uh, take a look at it. The left side is in good shape. The right rear is crunched a tad. And of course, NASCAR has to look at it and approve them unloading a the backup car. That's right, Larry, and that's a good point. You can't just say, I'm going to a backup car. They have to, NASCAR has to decide that this car would be too badly damaged to repair. And Daryl, even the rear spoiler looks it's in pretty, pretty good shape. Yeah, get a shot of the right side. I'm not sure if the right front ever hit anything or not. That, that would be pretty, you know, you can fix the rear of these cars pretty easy. Stick another rear end housing up under, trailing arms, whatever it needs, as long as it doesn't bend that snout in the front. So Elliot and the Red M will take the mandatory trip to the care center and be checked out. Denny Hamlin is fastest. Coming up, Travis Quapel, Stanton Barrett, Joni Machak. They put him in a ambulance? Yes. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway, where Scott Riggs in the Valvoline Dodge will be our next qualifier. Denny Hamlin quickest to the 2896. 22 of 31 drivers have already been on the clock. Now, Scott was six quickest in practice earlier today at a 29.57. He'd have to pick up a good six tenths if he wants to take uh, Denny Hamlin off the pole right now with about uh, eight cars left to go. It's funny to me. I've been noticing that guys are having more trouble now as the sun is set getting into turn one. I don't know if that means you're charging that corner harder because it feels better, but they have a little trouble with the car walking up the hill down there. This 10 car looks pretty solid there. 197, look right here. He was 197 off the turn three. Picked the throttle up, stayed in it. Pole man. Yes, sir. 28.95 by less than one one hundredth of a second. And I just believe I would quit there, Scott. I was going to say, what are you thinking now, Scott? They just told him P1. Car still looks nice and smooth. Bring it home. At about the same speed, 28.97. So that that right there would have been second quickest. Good job, man. Good job. 28.90 both laps there. In the racetrack, buddy. Did good job on adjustments is in the racetrack. I agree. She was down and dirty. We had 31 cars entered for this race. Apparently, Boris said. Uh, that car is not going to make time, so 30 will be on the clock. And here's Dick. With Elliot Shadler, how'd that thing get away from you? <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh, just too loose. I was trying to drive through it and just lost it. Just uh, very frustrated. It's, I can't remember racing being this hard in a long, long time the last two months. And, and at a place that I usually qualify good at and kind of know what I want and feel, just um, just got away from me. I tried to catch it off the back stretch and and uh, just couldn't keep up with it and thought I kept it off the wall a little bit, but then it kind of got me up to the inside and, and hit pretty good. So, uh, hey, we tore up that car. That was my 600 car, so I kind of put my team in a bind again for, for next week. But uh, just been very frustrating times right now at, at our company for a while and just kind of continues this weekend. But the guys are working hard, and we'll try to, try to fix the M&M's car and get it back out next week. 
The next win is going to feel so good. Thank you. Car didn't look that bad, but he says uh, they'll have a backup and bring this one back well, I for the say, 600. It's hard to tell, you know, watching on TV, just how hard it impacted the wall. And it doesn't take a lot to knock the snout off one of them. Travis Quapple in the Tide Chevrolet is one and done with a 29.68, 15th. But you can certainly hear the frustration in Elliott Sadler's oh. voice. There's yep. no question. Needs a good run. Get that confidence picked back up. Heard it in Elliott, and we saw, we'd heard the same thing in Dale Jarrett on trackside. Uh, that's, that uh, that there's just some frustrations oh. going on over there that uh, they got to get a handle on. Well, Daryl, I think you brought the point out to Dale Jarrett. You know, they know they've got the same engines that those five Roush cars have, and I, that has to be frustrating on everyone's part. That right there would drive me crazy. You know that the Yates cars have got the best Yates motor they can have in them. And there sits Biffle and Kurt uh, Kenseth and, and, and Carl Edwards and all those guys, Mark. And they, they rave about the horsepower under the hood. But I always think back to what one of my engine builders told me. They only got 800 horsepower if you hold them wide open. That's it. It's true. There's only two places you can hold them wide open right now. <laughs> Daytona Talladega. So this is the theracespace.com, psychopedia.com Chevrolet for Stanton Barrett. <laughs> Stanton can come up with some sponsors. Yes, he can. Hair of the dog, and now he's got. Yeah, it's psychopedia. It's, uh, I, I don't even, I don't know. Sounds like something I'd write. We'll find out for tomorrow night. It's one of those words like Camarama. Yeah. It just came to you one night. 30.01 on lap one, and Stanton will be one of those teams next Thursday night that will be faced with the challenge of trying to qualify for the Coca-Cola 600. Pretty good lap, 18. Looks like this lap's going to be just a little bit slower. Psychopedia, sound, it's either a website that is an encyclopedia of psychology, so don't, don't let Daryl go there, or it could be a website for psychos. You just never know. But we'll have the answer. I don't let Daryl go there. Pick, pick me. <laughs> I can go there. <laughs> so I don't know. Your choice, Matt. One or the other. We'll get back to that. I don't want to get involved in that one there. That's a multi-choice, multi with a multiple choice answer. But one thing, the track temperature is going down, guys, and Scott Riggs making full use of that. How about that qualifying lap? That was good for us. You know, we were really happy with the car and race trim. Uh, all the guys in the the Valvoline Stanley Tools Dodge did a good job. Uh, this is an older car that we've been working with, and we tested here both times we came here to test, and uh, felt good about it. Just uh, felt good about it in, in race trim, put it in qualifying trim, and uh, man, I almost, I almost busted my tail there both laps. And so I uh, didn't really make a good qualifying effort. So we went back, and they did some. Uh, I, I went back to Motorhome and forgot about it, and they said, just forget about that. We're going to fix it, and uh, and they did. So uh, I think it'll be really good in race trim too. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. That car looked really good on the racetrack. It really did. But again, I'm seeing that same thing. I don't. Oh, here we go, Joe. Joe. Hang on, baby. Joe's car was really, really loose. And so I walk up turn one down here, and he got real bad loose off of four. Now, what he's probably going to do, what he should do, is around, stop. Boy. There you go. Because he has not taken the white flag. He is officially still on the clock of his first lap. So what he'll do, he'll back up and go all the way back around the racetrack, get another run. Obviously, the first lap will not be any good at all, but he's banking on the second lap. And Larry, a lot of guys just go to the back straightaway. It's so critical to get up steamed if you're going to try to get a good lap. I'd come all the way back around here just to the to turn one side of the start-finish line. I'm not so sure I wouldn't come almost to the start-finish line because, remember, heat in the tires is important, too. Yeah, this could be a – actually, it could turn out really good for him. He didn't hurt his tires. He does have heat in them. It's like getting an extra lap. But what he's doing is perfectly legal. He's still on the clock right now, officially, of lap one. But I'd come on and on and on. Don't stop back there. I don't, you know, I don't mind being wrong, but I hate being way off. And we were way off. Psychopedia.com is a website about art films and independent filmmakers uh, website. So that'll be interesting. Well, I just believe Joe Nemechek in the 01 car, he, he didn't come far enough around. Nope. It's going to be hard to be up to speed by the time he gets to the start finish line. That's the reason everyone leaves pit road like they stole the car. Right. No, he should have come all the way around here to the front straightaway and, and, and he'd had all the way through three and four or one and two to get speed up to come to get the green. Now he's uh, like starting at the back straightaway. Now, everybody starts this race that attempts to qualify, but where you start is so important because it's only a 30-lap sprint. 
A lot of times you're getting up to speed lap, getting into turn three will be your best entrance into turn three. This is not going to be a bad lap. Oh, no, it, it won't be bad. That's a fast car. And it, it's starting to come down, but I think the reason it's starting to come down, now the car's up to speed. Built up a little momentum. Probably feels a lot better, too. It's going to end up a, probably about mid-pack with this run right here. Go Army, 15, dead center of the pack with a, with a 64. I'll take it. Yep. Considering what it looked like <laughs> off turn four on lap one. Joe's first lap. Uh, folks, you drove to the track faster than that, but not as sideways. Nice save down there. So not a bad effort as it all turned out. Kyle Petty in the Coca-Cola number 45 Dodge. Oh. The MyCokeRewards.com entry. Kyle was only 20th quickest in practice, and this is a race team over the next few weeks. They, they need to get their act together as far as their finishes because they're right there on the borderline of falling out of the top 35 in owner points if they're not careful. Yeah, they don't need any more DNFs. And if they fall out of top 35, Kyle in, in recent years has not had the best qualifying package to work with. Going to be a tall order to make those shows if you fall off that cliff. Yeah, because honestly, with Kyle not being a stellar qualifier, I think the top 35 owner points really complemented. There he goes, there he, there he oh, goes. Boy. Turn one has just got everybody's number. I can't believe it. Now, there'll be no doubt on this one going to a backup car. Crush and recycle. His first lap was 29.87, 18th quickest for Kyle, but he will go to a backup car, will go to the rear of the field for tomorrow night's race. I really believe what's happened in turn one is these guys are trying to go fast. I think they were backing off in practice and kind of easing it down into one. Now they're trying to run down in there like wide open like we've done here in the past, and it's just not working. Well, you heard Scott Wimmer say, as we see right here, Kyle Petty, this is on his second lap, just right in the middle of the court. Gee, that's, that's a hard, hard hit. Hard. And that's one of those, we were talking about motor reversals. That one could have hurt the motor because that went straight from spinning forward to tires spinning backwards. Watch the lettering on the tires and what happens there. This just starts so early. I mean, you don't see the end result till it gets all the way around, but that started getting into the turn. The back was out of out from under him and he just carried it all the way around. But Darrell, what I was going to say, we heard Scott Wimmer in his interview say he had good grip, and he said the minute he went into that sunlight on the racetrack, he could feel it start to slip and slide just a little bit. You can see right there, yeah. there it is. And I, I just had not noticed, all I've heard drivers talk about is how smooth the track is and how they got all the bumps out of it, but there is still that gradded bump down in turn one, up over that entrance down into the corner down there. I'm sure when it turns nighttime, we're going to still see sparks. We'll see the sparks, yeah. Out. I think you're right. And it looks like Kyle Petty is going to need all the votes he can get to try to make it into the next All-Star Challenge. To vote your favorite driver into the next All-Star Challenge, go to NASCAR.com, surf your way around the website, and you'll find a link to the voting page on there somewhere. With that car there off turn two. Had a little uh, hop in it. Martin Truex. Fast Pro Shops. Voted Chevy. into the uh, All-Star Race last year by the fans. Let's see if he can get a nibble here. He was the 19th quickest in practice earlier. 29.53, pretty solid lap for yeah. the one car. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe he can reel in the uh, pole. Those letters on the nose stand for, what, National Wild Turkey Federation. That is it. Or maybe he could take his pole and reel in the pole. Jeff Hammond's president of that federation. Boy, I can't believe y'all. Why do y'all pick on Hammond? Because we can. <laughs> Us. And he doesn't realize it. <laughs> I tell you, it doesn't take hardly anything to get Larry going, you know what? Just a little whisper it, it, in my ear. Just a little encouragement. He's all over it. Here's Dick. Well, Kyle Petty hit the wall so hard there's concrete in both the left front and left rear tire. What happened out there? Uh, I wrecked. Uh, we've been junk since we've been here. Uh, we've been junk the last two weeks in practice. and We were good at Darlington race-wise, but we were really bad. And 
We had a good test over here, and I hate it for Coca-Cola because this was their uh, this is their car, uh, and, and I was pretty proud to be driving a Coca-Cola car. So hopefully this other one will be a little better. Um, I hate it for this car because it was a pretty decent car, but we just could never get it hooked up to the racetrack. And I'm smarter than that. I'm mad at myself because I shouldn't have wrecked it. They're unloading the backup car right now. Thanks, Dick. Uh, Mike Skinner and the number 37 team have withdrawn uh, from this race. And that puts our last qualifier on the speedway, the Interstate Battery Chevy of J.J. Yaley, third quick in practice. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Most of the racetrack is completely in shade right now, and J.J. was third quickest. You just don't know how close J.J. Yaley came to not being able to qualify this car. You saw a lot of the problems at the Truck Series group had qualified. Kelly Sutton spun off turn four, almost got in the back of this car. She's going to be a good one. 29-31, fourth quickest for J.J. Yaley. And he, well, I thought he was going to shut it down there for a second. No, he's still on it. And I think it's a good thing. I, he might pick up because he was a little loose off of two on that first lap. See if he can get through three and four. No, no, no. He's losing it right there. Everybody fights loose in, seems like. Hard tire with not a lot of rear spoiler on the back of that thing. Second lap is quicker, still fourth. Doesn't yeah. pick up anything, so. Uh, Scott Riggs, Riggs, right there, wins the pole for the Nextel Open. Yay, Ray. Ray's having a big night. Ray has the outside pole, Ray Evernham, for the truck race, Aaron Crocker. He has the pole for the Nextel Open, and Joe Gibbs Racing with Denny Hamlin. We'll start on the outside of the front row. Now, Nextel, Nextel Challenge qualifying coming up. Don't leave. Here's Matt. Scott Riggs had to dodge a number of big bullets there at the end. Congratulations, you held out. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, it's great to uh, get us a pole. I wish we could have got it in a in a points race and uh, start the, the front row in a, in a points race. But just got, you know, just glad that all these guys in Spavalin, Stanley Tools, Dodge did, uh, you know, dug deep. And they said they were making up, trying to give me a good car, making up for how bad our car was last week. So, uh, like I said, we'll see if we can go get him in the race. Good luck. Thank you. 186 and a half miles an hour. There's a bunch of guys that had some pretty good runs in there, y'all. You know, Kenny Schrader's there in sixth, and uh, there's Scott Wimmer in the four car, eighth, Strimmy in ninth. Pretty darn good runs by a bunch of guys that uh, see some improvement in their qualifying effort, particularly Strimmy and uh, Scott Wimmer. Yeah, we see three of our rookies there, Denny Hamlin, J.J. Yaley, David Strimmy, all in the top ten. But a lot of experience, too. Jeff Green, Jeff Burton, Kenny Schrader. Casey Mears in the top ten with his teammate Strimmy. Sterling, 11th. But remember, Sterling talked about he felt something in the engine, so the question will be if they do any work on that. Yikes. Of course, they'd have to go to the rear of the field. Yeah, that's not good news. And Kenny Kyle Wallace. Petty goes to the back. Kenny Wallace right there looking pretty yep. good tonight. The old TIDE tied car. Yep, Joe Nemechek making a nice recovery after almost wrecking on lap one. So in all, 29 cars took time, or attempted to. Guys got their work cut out for Melia Sadler and now the Petty. So get those backup cars out and get them ready to race. Coming up after the break, qualifying for the Nextel All Star Challenge. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway where we're going to qualify 18 cars for the Nextel All-Star Challenge. This will be the most unique night of qualifying you will see all season because the lineup rests not just in the driver's hands, but in those of his pit crew as well. Qualifying just completed for the Nextel Open. The traditional fastest lap starts on the pole and at 186 and a half miles an hour, Scott Riggs and his Valvoline Dodge will be on the pole next to the FedEx Chevy of Denny Hamlin. You'll see that tomorrow night beginning at 7 p.m. on FX. But right now, the lineup includes drivers and their full pit crews. Here's Dick Bergman. With Tony Stewart, you watch truck qualifying. You just watch qualifying for the open. So all those people spinning out and all those people crashing. How do you go out there and run wide open now? Easy, because if I spin out, then I can just say, look at all the other guys that did too. So I got an excuse. But now you just 
you just do the best you can. I mean, uh, you know, this place is tricky now. It's it's not the surface, and it's not, you know, Goodyear. It's just the, you know, with fresh pavement like that, they had to make a really hard tire. And with that hard tire, if you lose grip all at once, uh, it really takes off on you. So you just go out and just try to run smooth laps. And, you know, Denny ran an awesome lap uh, for open qualifying. So, uh, you know, we had a little different deal here, and we didn't even do any qualifying runs. So we're just going to go in our race trim and uh, try to have a good pit stop and not make any mistakes and don't get any penalties. And... Uh, you try to get a, get a good starting spot for tomorrow night. A night like this separates people like Tony Stewart from the rest of us, Mike. <laughs> the defending series champ, pretty loose and ready to go. So are we. Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, Daryl Waltrip. And Daryl, the driver with the single fastest lap is probably not going to be on the pole tonight. And it looks like uh, this in the driver's hands may all be settled within a distance of 600, 800 feet or so. Well, there's a lot of elements in this kind of qualifying. You, do, you just heard Tony talk about, first of all, you got the tires, you got the track. Now you got to go out, take the green flag, come around, and you got to drive on the pit road, and you've got to get down to pit road speed. This is really, we talk about the crews and what they've got to do. they got to not make any mistakes. But that driver is the one that's really got all the pressure on him because he's got to get on pit road fast without speeding, and then he's got to get out of here without wrecking. Larry, which is a higher priority, being fast on pit road or making no mistakes? Well, I go back to last year in qualifying. I think out of the 18 or 19 cars that qualified, over half of them had mistakes either on the pit stop or predominantly coming on the pit road speeding. When you leave pit road, it's wide open. There's no speed limit. But getting on the pit road quickly, but getting down to that 45 miles per hour, we saw so many drivers busted last year on that L. Yeah, you're probably going to hear post the whatever car for too fast entering. Let's hope not. Here's Matt Yoko. One of those cars last year was the eight of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now the pit crew coach at DEI is Walt Smith. Walt, any extra special uh, exercises or anything for the guys this week preparing for tonight or just business as usual? Just really business as usual. We um, practiced our tire pulls a little bit more than usual. But actually with the um, pit crew challenge we had on Wednesday night, I, I gave them a really easy week because uh, I knew the stress that was going to have. And then this is a different different deal here and basically it's just tire changers hit 20 lug nuts get out of the way because those tires are going to be ripped out and uh, have at it the guys seem really loose joking around oh we're having a blast it's it's great it's a lot of fun and uh, everybody's pumped up so uh, we've got our support guys here our all pro retired jack man over there and the crew chief of the decade over there i mean we're having fun and that retired jack man is kevin <laughs> tubier pinnell well this is their night Let's have a look at our FedEx racetracks for tonight. Well, I think Daryl and I touched on most of them while ago in the opening, and it's not about how fast you are on the racetrack. Fast entrance to pit road, watch your speed. 45 miles per hour from the time you come on the pit road to the time you get to your pit box. Good, solid pit stop. 20 lug nuts off, 20 lug nuts on, a four-tire stop. No fuel added, just, just the four tires. And then your driver basically getting off pit road with no speed limit. But you know what, guys? Based on watching truck qualifying and bush qualifying, just bring it back in one piece for Pete's sake. I think you'll be in pretty good shape. Pretty cool that uh, Dale Jr., first car out. That'll get the uh, fans on their feet yes, early on in this qualifying session. And you see he leaves pit road. Now, you know, even leaving back here in the middle of pit road is a big advantage as far as coming to get to green because you picked up that length of pit road to get up speed. See Junior getting a little heat in the tires. Hope that's enough. Now you have the option of making the pit stop at the end of the first lap or the end of the second lap, but we anticipate as in the past, everyone will come to pit road pretty much at the end of their second lap. Junior takes the green at a speed of 182 miles an hour and gets to 194 going into turn one. Car very stable. Don't see any moving around. Down the back. They got it on the full tilt, DW. It's fully blocked up. Yeah, I know. I noticed it. You got the thing taped up pretty much solid. Comes lap one. Twenty-nine fifty-nine. That's about a half a second off from what Scott Riggs set on the pole. Just about 196 going off into turn one. Wow. Should be trying to come down to get on pit road this time by. Catch a gear, third gear, 
Bring it to the bottom. Got to be down to 45 right there. Second gear. Electronic timing along pit road to determine speeding penalties coming into the pits. Now we're doing a time where you're coming through turn three, getting on the pit road. Right there, this right time there. was 9.2. We'll be watching that throughout this qualifying session. Now I said the entire pit crew involved, but no fuel is added. It's a four tire change and away. I had about a 13.5 on the pit stop. Pretty solid pit stop. Stand out on the con on the concrete, got off on the asphalt a little bit. Now let's see how he looks getting out on the racetrack. Saw some issues here earlier today, but he did a nice job. He's back up to speed, third gear, and getting ready to hit high off turn three, uh, two. But Darrell, a lot of wheel spin all the way down through about 15 pit boxes on the concrete, and Junior, too fast entering pit road. Just like last year, you heard Matt Yoakum talk about it. He got one of the penalties last year. It, it's, I just don't see how a guy could do it. I mean, you're qualifying for Pete's sake. There's supposed to be no speed limit. We're also monitoring the speed that the car leaves pit road, hit it in racetrack. Dale Earnhardt Jr. speed was 110, so we'll watch how that unfolds. 123.713 seconds is the total time for Dale Jr. Coming up, Jamie McMurray and Carl Edwards. Dale Jr. climbs out and he will sustain a 20 second penalty for speeding down pit road. The fun police had him at 51 miles an hour, speed limit's 45. Mike, if I was me, I'd move that commitment line about halfway into the pit lane here. All they really want that force for the safety of the crews and give a guy, I mean, we're gonna hear that a lot tonight. You just think about it, he's doing 196 mile an hour coming into turn three and he's gotta be at 45 coming on pit road. It's tall old. That's hard to do. Here's the Irwin Industrial Tools for Jamie McMurray. Not a very good first lap for Jamie, 30-14. I don't think Jamie's going to be caught speeding coming in. He was way slow getting in. His car wasn't handling very good either, Larry. It was loose. But, way up the racetrack. But if he's, he's gonna be slow down enough yeah. down pit road, if they get a good, clean pit stop with no mistakes, Bob Osborne's crew, you know, I mean, this could end up being a good starting spot with no mistakes. What do I like to say? Don't beat yourself. Right. And that's what you do when you get caught coming down through there too fast. A little slow on the stop, 1537. That's about two seconds slower than the eight cars pit stop. He stays on the concrete quite a ways leaving. And Matt? Mike, they had issues on the left rear trying to index that tire. They lost a little bit of time there. Yeah, about two seconds. No penalties coming in for Jamie McMurray. And unlike uh, other pit crew races, they don't torque, they don't put a torque wrench on the lug nuts. It's just gotta be on the stud up against the wheel. Doesn't have to be tight. Whoa, he's in big trouble. That car's a handful to drive, boys. It's looked like that the entire time on the racetrack. Now his exit speed was 113. Boy, they have just not been able to corral this car around Jamie McMurray. They have been all over the place with it. And I'm not talking about tonight. I'm talking about this whole year. You got a talented team with all the right resources. Roush Racing, you got a talented driver. And there's just something in the mesh of those two that just hasn't paid off yet. But remember, they made a crew chief change. They moved Bob Osborne from Carl Edwards right. over to Jamie about a month ago. Plus, they got great teammates. Here's Dick Bergman. With an unhappy junior, how hard is it to go from, oh, about a buck 85 down to the speed limit on pit road? Did you say unhappy? Yeah. Why am I unhappy? Speeding. Oh, was I? I didn't know if I was or not. I thought I was pretty good, but uh, I don't know. You just, you try to get, you know, slow down best you can. And uh, you gotta, you really just gotta get all you can get. And I got a little too much, I guess. So we'll just uh, take what we get. You know what, Junior? That's happened to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Good point. I, I can't tell you how many times I said, I bet he won't be happy with that. And then you go talk to the driver, and he's elated. He said, man, that's the best we've done all day. Carl Edwards pretty quick here in the Office Depot Fusion. But Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car did look pretty good out on the racetrack. Yep. yep, pretty smooth. And as we're fond of saying, it'll race well. 
Now, the first lap on Carl Edwards, and remember, these are unofficial. I'm doing them with a stopwatch up here, 29.75, which is about a tenth and a half slower than Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s first lap. Oh, but no here penalties comes on McMurray, so he's our leader right now. Degree of difficulty. Whoa, whoa. Hits his mark right at the end of that white line. He was 1040 getting in, which was very close to what Jamie McMurray, his teammate, was. Brings it down 45 miles per hour. Look at those fellas on the wall. They've been waiting all week for this right here. And all the pit stops will be the same. Four tires, no fuel. You're watching guys that have practiced and practiced and practiced for this event. You know, Matt, that seemed a little, little slow on the left front. Yep. It was a little slow there as well. And you can also see, like DW mentioned, these guys have been practicing. You got guys like Aaron Slade, who's the usual catch can man. He was helping pull the tire off the left rear, just trying to save more time using people in uh, better positions because they don't have the fuel. His pit time by my stopwatch was about 1478. As you saw right here, he was 109 exiting pit road. And I'd say Carl's going to the top of the chart here. By a second and a half, Carl Edwards, position one. No penalties. So it's Edwards, McMurray, and Earnhardt. Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart up next. Our fourth qualifier is former cup champ Bobby Labonte in the Gogurt number 43. That's a yogurt to go. Comes in a plastic tube and, you know, no fuss, no mess. Pretty sporty first lap, 29-22. That's the fastest of the four cars just on that single first lap. Well, you know what, Larry? I look for these guys to have a big week over here with the, these cars. Uh, Todd Parrott and the way Bobby Labonte gets around this joint, the way he ran in Atlanta before he had engine failure, it could be a great week for the old 43 crowd. 10-4 on his entrance, which that's basically what uh, Carl Edwards was in the 99 car, but Bobby ran a faster first lap than Carl. Let's yeah. see what the pit stop Got was. a little in the bank. Yeah. And the 43 crew going to work already around to the left side now. Bobby's for his second this event twice. Solid stop going on by the 43 guys. A little bit of trouble. Just a little bit of slowness there on the left rear. Pretty good stop, though, Matt. 1375. That'd have Six. been about a flat, Larry, if you hadn't had that little hang up on the left rear there. And what I did like about Labonte's exit was that he stopped spinning the tires about four pits out and got hooked up and going. Kerry playing with the throttle, you know, spinning and trying to get it hooked up. He did a good job. He was two miles per hour faster than Carl Edwards leaving. And you see right here, all of it's somewhat adding up so far. Well, just remember this, Ryan Newman uh, won this thing last year with a minute 22, 443, uh, 132 mile an hour average. P1, 125.2 seconds. So that's 2.2 better than Carl Edwards. Nice run for Bobby Labonte and for his Todd Parrott-led crew. And it was pretty much all the way around the racetrack, entrance, exit, and the pit stop. It all added up. Dick? But a nice run for Carl Edwards as well. How about that pit crew? Oh, my pit crew's awesome. They, they got third place, you know, this week at the uh, All-Star Pit Crew Challenge. They're great guys, man. They give me 100% every week. And the coolest thing is they don't get down on me when I make mistakes, you know? when I What, you make mistakes? I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> uh, man, they're, they're a great bunch of guys. I'm proud to have them. And hopefully uh, we can win this thing for them tomorrow night. All right, well, Humpy Wheeler has picked this guy to win tomorrow night. And, of course, Humpy has uh, an incredible track record of picking the winner for the All-Star Race. He is the promoter here at Lowe's Motor Speedway, and he's quite a predictor. Here is the defending next up Cup champ, Tony Stewart, in the Home Depot Chevrolet. He and Greg Zipidelli have one of the longest driver crew chief tenures of anybody in next up Cup. Yeah, I think this is basically their uh, eighth year together. I know one thing. They got a hot, they got that great setup for Charlotte. That thing is right on the white line. How Dar fast is it? Darrell 29-21, which is basically right there with what Bobby Labonte ran. That thing, look at it. It's right on that line. It's almost like it's hooked to that white line. 
You don't see that car moving around. Tony's got a steady hand there. Looking for that white line, he's on it. Shoves up in the middle, here he comes. That's all right here. Smooth, get her slowed down, woed up, yo. Crawling along at 45 miles an hour as uh, Zippy's crew awaits. Matt? Stewart was 14th fastest in practice. Pulls to a stop, one of the best entries into their pit box we've seen, especially like Dale Earnhardt Jr. who almost slid through his box. Now, solid stop so far by Ira Joe Hussey on the front and Todd Foster on the back. Smooth, solid, he almost stalls it as he leaves. 12.4 seconds, great stop by the Home Depot guys. Now, I really liked his exit. He oh, yeah. spun the wheels a little and got right out onto the asphalt and got some grip. Look at here, boys, and you know what? It adds up right there, 115. That's the fastest anyone has been. I liked his exit, too, uh, Mike, because even though it sounded like he bogged down a little bit, that's good because the tires were not spinning. They were digging. And by the way, his entrance through turn three and four was the fastest of anyone also, 10-3. It's gonna be a run to beat right here. This will put a mark up there, I believe. Looking pretty good right here, DW. Pole man, 124 and a half seconds, 130 miles an hour. That is almost a full second faster than his former teammate, Lavani. Let's have a look at pit road times so far. Now this is what we show you basically on race day, which is the entire pit road, including the pit stop. And you see basically right there, Tony Stewart, who's at the top of the charts right now, he has the fastest. That's the entire pit road time. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., that includes the 22nd penalty. Dick? With Bobby Labonte, you had a great run. What was the best part? Uh, not getting arrested for speeding, the pit stop, on the track with the car at speed, what was it? Well, I, I, the, the, the lap that I ran was a good lap for us, and we hadn't run that good, you know what I mean? I, obviously, I know it's cooler, but, you know, we weren't close enough to, to even get to that, I didn't think so. So that was pretty encouraging, so hopefully that'll be good. Um, the guys did a great job in the pits. Uh, you know, I was really cautious coming in. Thank you, buddy. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Stewart. And, uh, so, uh, so I was, I was a little too cautious on entry, and just didn't want to spin the tires too hard on exit. You know, just break loose, stuff like that. So, uh, overall, I mean, the guys did a good job. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it was a good, good, uh, good qualifying effort for us, and uh, all the way around as far as uh, the car on the racetrack was better than it was in practice. And the guys did a good job. Of nice to see your smile when you get out of the car, and your crew chief Todd yeah. Parrots as well. Dick, did Stewart give him a brush back as he rolled yeah. the car into oh, a halt? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he does that all the time, whether to other drivers, to any <laughs> of us walking around in the garage area. Oh, yeah, he got a brush back. <laughs> hey, what, Kurt Busch had the fastest single lap of anyone so far, 29-12. And wow. I'm going to tell you what, he was pretty quick there, 10-1. That's two tenths quicker than Tony Stewart. What I like about what Kurt did, he took it up, arched it up a little to get a nice entrance into the, into the pit lane there. I like that. Matt, a little slow getting around it. Qualified eighth one year ago, DW. Now, you can see Chris Williams. Oh, he had to go back for one up there. Gosh. Yep, they lost time there. He's going to lose a lot of time here on Pier Road. He is away. <laughs> great stop time-wise, though, 12-8. Yeah, I was going to say, great recovery on their pit stop. Right at about 13 seconds flat, Matt. We saw him have a problem leaving pit road in practice today. And look at there. Today. There's the fastest, 116. That's one mile per hour better than Tony Stewart. Yeah, during practice, he wanted to see how far into turn one he could go before sweeping up onto the racetrack. It turned out not very far. I'll tell you what, if he can get through three and four, I think all of this is going to add up, even with a little bit of bobble on the pit stop. Yeah, oh, it looks so good. I mean, smooth as silk. They missed a lug nut on the right front and had to go back for it. Top of the heat. Good job, Kurt. By over a full ball. second. Now we're talking. Now Stewart. we're getting close to what Ryan Newman. Remember, Ryan Newman was 122.4. Up, oh, four out of five. Uh, go back and get that one. But okay. Hell, we even had a problem. Now, NASCAR does not check the torque on the lugs. They just make sure that the lug is there and that it's against the wheel. I'd say he uh, got that covered all right. Dick? With Tony Stewart, how'd the car feel at speed? That's the best it's felt all day, actually. Um, you know, we haven't been real strong in the practice session. We were really loose all day, but uh, 
Uh, I asked Zippy, I said, did you put tape on it? Because we didn't do a qualifying run at all. So uh, this was the first qualifying run we did, and you know we made a lot of adjustments there. And that's the best it's felt. So uh, I'm no, I know uh, guys like Casey Kane are going to go faster there later on, but uh, that was a good effort for us. I mean, the guys that had a great pit stop and felt like I got on and off pit road pretty well. So uh, it's a good start for the weekend. Indeed it is. Congratulations. Michael Waltrip in the Napa Dodge. Wasn't very quick in practice. Let's no, see if they can pick up here. The, the nighttime's doing his car uh, good because uh, that's the best I've seen that car look from all the practice he was doing. Daryl, his lap was a 29.84. Remember, so far, the fastest lap I have is Kirk Bush in the 2 of the 29.12. And just to let the fans know how Michael is in this race, yeah, it's all the past winning drivers and owners from this year and last year, but since Michael uh -oh, won uh -oh, this uh -oh, race, Larry. way up the racetrack. I'd like to say he did that on purpose, but I'm not real sure. Not bad, Daryl. Didn't hurt him, I don't think. I tell you what, it looks like he had a great entrance, 10-2. Yeah. Well, remember. getting up there like that is, is a good move, but I thought he was out of here. Well, they're saying golf up and down. I never know whether he's doing it. The thing I never know about my brother is whether he's doing it on purpose or if it was something going on. And you know the, the big thing about that? He doesn't either, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Kurt Busch's all those lug nuts were against the wheels, so his run was fine, Matt. And Gordy Arbiter Jr. already hitting the lugs in that left front. Mike hits him again, and Michael's down and away. 14-4 on the actual pit stop. Oh, look, he's all over the concrete trying to get off pit road. That's not pretty. Yeah, a little light right here. That's about 10 miles per hour slower than Kurt Busch leaving. Yeah, it's just all wheel spins. They don't have concrete. A little bit too long, I think. But anyhow, Michael won this race within the last 10 years. That automatically qualifies you to be in the next All-Star Challenge, even though he didn't win a race last year or this year so far. Went to Kentucky and tested this week, uh, trying Ooh. to work some more things out on the car. I'd say... Uh, Michael Walter, fifth quickest, 128.5 seconds. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway. Let's update Michael Walter sixth on the board, not fifth. And Kyle Busch in the Kellogg Chevrolet. Rick Hendrick has had a car in the All-Star Challenge every single time it's been run. If I'm not sure he's about not that speeding one. coming in. Yeah. That is the best time we've had so far by a bunch going through three and four coming in. Not a very good first lap on the five car though. Stopped way deep in his box too, Larry, and that's really messed his crew up some. He's just barely in the box. See the back bumper yeah, hanging over. Yeah, way deep. Thirteen point eight on the pit stop. Let's see what his exit will be. Oh man, there's one of those getting loose, getting out of the pits. Yep. One fourteen, which is good, but it could hurt him on around the corner, getting off back up to speed. Third quickest exit so far. Did most of that sideways too. <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like an awful lot of wheel spin for where you're trying to get to. And I tell you, we questioned that that 9-4, which is, is substantially better than everyone coming in. His pit road entrance was good as far as speeding. No speeding whatsoever. Third for Kyle Bush. He nailed it getting in, I'll tell you that. Dick is with his older brother. Yeah, he is. And right now, his older brother's on top of the chart. Big team effort. It is. This is so cool to have the team involved with their pit stop and then the drivers to give it right on the pit road as hard as you can and then leaving pit road. It's just so great being able to just grab gears, slide the tires. And I wouldn't recommend we do it all year. <laughs> We'd probably hurt somebody. Or everybody be picking way back there in turn four to get that run out of there. So it's great that the whole team gets excited about this. And they had a great stop on Wednesday during the Nextel Challenge for the crews, but just one little penalty. Tonight, little bobble, man, we're still on it. We'll see if it holds. Good enough. Thank you. Good job. Great run. Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Performance Alliance colors this weekend. He is a three-time winner of the All-Star Tilt 1995, 97, and 2001. Tied with Dale Earnhardt for the most wins in this All-Star race. Dale Earnhardt had three wins. Now, tomorrow night, 
out in Irwindale, California, the, which is the nation's finest short track there in the suburb of Los Angeles. Bob DeFazio is here today. He's going to be out there running the track tomorrow night. And they're going to have the big screen up, and they're going to show the Nextel All-Star Challenge to all their fans on the big screen. And then, when it's over, they'll start their Saturday night racing program. Now, uh, did I not mention that last week? I believe you did. If I was a short track promoter, I would put the big screen up and on, on cup nights on Saturday night. You could get a twofer. Message delivered. I was going to say, obviously, he's listening. Real good entrance time through turn three and four. Nine, four. Matches the best. Just an okay lap on lap one. Matt? In the past, Mike, Jeff Gordon has slid through the box and makes a nice entry. Last year, though, his team was penalized five seconds. One loose slug. Kevin Gilman completing service on the right rear. Solid stop going on so far, and he's away. I tell you what, 12, Matt, five. that's the fastest stop I've had right there as far as pit stop. Not a bad Good exit. Stop. Great exit. I like the way he got out of there. Little light right there. Remember, the benchmark right now is Kurt Busch, who's at the top of the charts at 116. He was 111. Kind of always, Jeff Gordon's one of those kind of guys that seems to me like he says, million dollars, now you're talking. And it's looking about like where we anticipated based on all the different times that we've seen, second quickest for Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. Think about all those no bull fives and the Winston millions and things, and every time there's a million dollars uh, dangling out there in front of him, he seemed to step it up a notch. <laughs> Funny about that, isn't it? Show me the money. Jeremy Mayfield, the UAW Dodge Dealers Dodge. Ray Evernham, one of his cars with Scott Riggs, has the pole for the next tell open. Looks like that 9-4 is about the benchmark for getting on. And he was at a 9-7, so about three-tenths off. Matt. Mike, another one of those teams last year penalized by a loose luck. Solid stop by the 19 guys, though. Uh -oh. I had a 13-6, Matt. Can't well, get going, though. Two problems. Too fast entering, that's a 20-second penalty. And about 10 seconds of wheel spin leaving. 111 on the yeah. yeah, he just sat there. He wasn't going anywhere for a moment. So 10 cars, two cars have had a pit road entering speeding penalty. Dale Earnhardt Jr. now Jeremy Mayfield. So that will be a 20 second penalty and they still have to check the lug nuts. Mayfield would have been fourth fastest, but for the penalty. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Dick. Well, Kyle Busch, your fourth quick on the board right now for starting position tomorrow night. That's pretty good. You got a decent chance to win the race. You win the race, you get a million dollars. What are you going to do with the money? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I haven't even thought that far ahead, really. I'm just uh, more worried about being able to get now. No wedding presents. You're already taken care of there, Slim. But uh, now I'm just going to go out there and do what we can. You know, we've got a great race car. I think the Kellogg Chevrolet is pretty strong for tomorrow. And, you know, the qualifying effort was a little bit sloppy there on my part, you know, especially getting in and then getting into my box and then leaving pit road. So, you know, there was um, first round jitters, you know, maybe next year will be a little bit better. Well, here's a guy that knows how to win this race for sure, Jeff Gordon. How was your car out there? Oh, everything was great. It was just a, a, a really good effort by the whole team. You know, we weren't very good during the daytime. We were real loose, and so Steve Letard and the guys on the DuPont uh, Performance Alliance car uh, Chevrolet did a great job uh, with, with tuning it up for the track. I uh, uh, was a little bit snug, which I wanted to be, and uh, got to pit road pretty good. Locked the front tire up a little bit more than I wanted to. Got on pit road, and, uh, you know, the guys just did a great job in the pits. We, we've had some phenomenal pit stops lately, so I've been looking forward to this type of a team event for us. Well, just seems as if whenever you come to Lowe's Motor Speedway, you're on top of the chart. Mike? Thanks, Dick. Greg Biffle just came on the radio and told his crew that his charter communication National Guard board is so loose he can't drive it. Well, you know what, though? He left pit road back here like everybody. He was spinning the tires all the way down through there. I'm not so sure he just didn't 
Cook to right rear, getting out of the pits. But it wasn't a bad lap, 29-40, and there you see 9-8 on his entrance. A lot of braking, a lot of downshifting to get Biffle down to 45 miles an hour, Matt. And Adam Everett, Joe Slingerland, the front tire changers, leap over the wall. Biffle pulls to a stop, a little pour in the back of the box. Changing things up a little bit. And he's away. What's the time, Larry Mack? Good stop, 13-4, Matt. Good pit stop. Yeah. Darrell, you heard Jeff Gordon talk about needing to be, you know, his car was a little bit snug. You see Biffle right there, 115. I'm not sure to turn down off that racetrack and to get back on this racetrack, you've got to be just a little snug, have just a little pull on that wheel. I don't want that back end stepping out when I'm trying to turn down on pit road at 160 mile an hour and pulling up on the brakes. Biffle as fast as anybody leaving. He yeah, had he, Tony Stewart at 115. He was good out, really good out. Tops is 116. So that'll do. Looks like third quickest for Biffle. Coming up, Ryan Newman, Kevin Harvick, and Jimmy Johnson. The Rocket, Ryan Newman in the Alltel Dodge from Penske Racing, our next qualifier. Pretty decent first lap, 29-28. Smoke of the tires Well, I tell you why, Larry, he carried more speed all the way to where he really started trying to woo up to get on pit road than looked like some of the guys did to me. Yeah, because he was a 10-1. We've been seeing some high nines, Matt. Absolutely, Larry Mack. Now the guys leap over the wall. Nice smooth entry, a pull and a win in this event. The all tell guys, smooth and solid so far. How'd the right side look? Look pretty solid, pretty good. Left side look, oh, just a little stutter step. Left side look pretty good though too. 12-9, Matt, good stop. So one lug nut in the right front fly up and almost get hung up there as the wheel was hammered on. Good out. Yeah, he ties Kurt Busch for the best out speed at 116 there. I like, uh, like what they're doing here. I don't know, he and Kurt both had great exit getting out of the, out of the box itself. For Chief Matt Borland, his part of this work is done. Darrell, oh. right now, up to this point, it looks like the biggest difference in Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman, Kurt ran a faster first lap. Everything else was pretty close to each other. Third fastest for Newman, 124.13 seconds. Three cars in the 124 second bracket. I'm not sure a lot of it wasn't on that final lap right there. Yeah, he got loose in three and four. Loose off a two on the first lap. Loose uh, hit a center of three and four on my um, coming back to the checkered lap. And uh, brake pedal is not good. And it got hung in between third and second coming into pit lane. Man, I'm glad he only ran three laps. <laughs> now this is our race off pit road. Again, this includes the pit stop. And if you notice, it's pretty much in the order that the qualifying is right now, except pretty much maybe for the 20 and the five being flip-flopped just a little bit, but we talked about it at the top of the show. This pole would be one on pit road, including the pit stop. True. Speech presentation of NASCAR Bud Pole Qualifying at Lowe's Motor Speedway is brought to you by Wolverine. Always relentless by nature. Boots, shoes, apparel, gear. Kevin Harvick and the GM Goodwrench Chevrolet will be our 13th qualifier. Todd Barrier is crew chief. Getting his crew ready to go. Richard Childress, like Rick Hendricks, has had at least one car in every All-Star Challenge. Hey, what, this 29 crew on pit road, they're normally pretty solid every time Kevin Harvick comes to pit road. In flat coming in, pretty good time right there. Took the short way in, turned down a little earlier than most drivers have been taking a little wider arc. I think that hurts you. I think I was a little diamond up is a good move. <laughs> in front of Matt. Harvick's best start in this event third. Now he was caught for speeding last year. One of three drivers. Pulver already done on the front, Hitman already done on the back, going to work on the left side, jack up. Harvick got the engine and he's away. 13-7, Matt, on that stop. Oh, no. uh, he had way too much RPM when he dropped the clutch. A lot of wheel spin. 
but he got it under control by about the fifth pit box. But there's the result, Larry. Seven miles per hour slower than our fastest two cars. Yeah, he was really in the gas before the jo uh, jack ever dropped, and yeah. boy, that created a ton of wheel spin. Looks like uh, the late draw is going to favor drivers, not because of the sun or the track temperature, but because of the amount of rubber laid down along the concrete on pit road. And I'm going to tell you what, one observation that we have seen, Kurt Busch and Jeff Gordon as Kevin Harvick could be six quickest, our two fastest cars, they really didn't turn a lot of RPM when that jack dropped and they took off. No, they almost stalled the engine. Remember Tony, uh, Matt said he stalled the engine. No, he yeah. didn't. He just didn't get the wheel spinning like some of these guys have yeah, done. He bogged it a little. Torque is your friend. Yeah. Trying to get off pit road there. There's Ryan Newman, who is third quick. And you know, earlier when we did the open qualifying, we mentioned that that is an impound race. This is not an impound race. And the reason being, John Darby, competition director for the next Dell Cup Series, was a little afraid with this pit stop, really hard on axles, drive plates, gears, transmissions. He didn't want the teams to be painted in a box, have to start the race with that equipment without it being checked. Yeah, we always, uh, and I'm sure you did too, we always change everything uh, once we did this little drill here, gear included. Jimmy Johnson, a little loose out of turn two in the Lowe's Chevrolet. He's the 2003 winner of NASCAR's All-Star Night. Well, he sure hadn't been happy with his car all weekend or all day today, and uh, they didn't have a very good test over here. So if they can get this baby hooked up and make him happy, um, they've done a great. I think they've done a great turnaround. That's a decent first lap, 29:34. That's about right there where Ryan Newman in the 12 ran within a half a tenth. Well, they seem to always be able to get it right when it counts. He's sailing in right there. Carried a lot of speed. Get her woed up. And he's a little low coming in. A little early, but he's pretty slow getting to that line when he gets there. 10 flat, which is exactly where Kevin Harvick was, right about where Ryan Newman was as well. So that only gives up about six tenths to the fastest cars getting in, Matt. Eighth fastest in practice, Mike. Now he won from 16th, like you mentioned. He won this event back in 2003. Mike Trower already hitting those lugs on the right front. Kimmy Ladiga already around the back. Indexing the tires about the same time. And he is away. Oh, yeah, well, man. 12 seconds. Two. Great stop. Good stop. You know why, Larry? One of the things he did, the crew, he stopped the car right on the money. I mean, the jack man stuck the jack right where he was. And look here, boys, 117. That's a miles per hour faster than our top two cars right now. But, Darrell, you're right. The crew didn't have to move they an never, inch. They went right to their spot, and he was on yep. it. Made a huge difference. I, first one I've seen really do it that right. If he can get through three and four, possibly that exit and that pit stop can make up for the little difference he lost getting onto pit road. So the worst handling car through practice <laughs> becomes... Our Number new pole sitter. You are the pole, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was out of freaking control here on the track. I guess they were. Time. They didn't need to look at a stopwatch. They knew it was good. Yeah. Yippee. What a deal. And that's getting close to what Ryan ran last year. 22-4 last year. That's a 22 uh, nine, so it keeps inching a little closer. Now here is was Jimmy coming in, and uh, to Daryl's point, let's watch right where he stops and where the crewmen are when the car comes to rest. When they can anticipate where he's going to stop. It cuts seconds off their Yeah, stop. they don't have to adjust anything. I mean, they are already down and in position, and the Jackman's the yeah, first thing I noticed. Great job. Look at the rotors glowing on that thing. Look at right, right there. there. Right Never, where the Jackman Nobody was. ever moved. Stopped right on their mark. Right. Big celebration for Jimmy Johnson as Matt Kenseth takes to the track in the DeWalt Ford. I tell you what, he laid a lap down there, 28-88. That's <laughs> faster than Scott Riggs set on the pole for the open race a while ago. Wow. What did you say? I'll tell you what. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and he's got day in and day out one of, if not the best pit crews in the business in Robbie Reiser and the Killer Bees. Yeah, let's get it on pit road without any uh, speeding penalty here. He's pretty hot, but he takes it up the hill. 
Locks it up. Whoa, did he lock it up. But oh, man, like that, that looked fast. I like Good that time, big arm. Nah, nah. That looked fast. I like the way, you, if you arch it up a little bit, you get a little quicker time, it appears to me. Here he comes, Matt. Let's see if they can capitalize on Matty's performance on the track with a good stop here. Easy entry as Notostad and West go to work changing the tires on the right side. How to look on the right side, Larry Mack? About five and a half seconds on the right side to the jack drop. And he is away. 12-8. Good little stutter step out, 12-8. Yeah, but a lot of throttle and a lot of not going far fast. But he's, pick, the box. he's picking it up once he gets it going. Looking for about 116, a little slow right there, six miles per hour off, but remember he had a great first lap and a pretty decent entrance. Wheel spin is the enemy of acceleration. Yeah, but you know what? It's it's about the most fun you can have because oh, you don't yeah. get the chance to do this every week. Well, that's true. Going down through there like you're driving a, a pro stock, you know, maybe like you're uh, Kenny Anderson or somebody. It's coming down just a little bit, but looks like the Achilles Hill, this run is going to be after the pit stop right there. He's going to end up six quickest. What a shame. Great lap, great everything. Coming up, Casey Kane, Dale Jarrett, and Mark Martin will be our final qualifiers. There's the fastest man in Concord, North Carolina right now. Casey Kane in Ray Evernham's UAW Dodge Dealers Dodge. He's got money in the bank. Challenge. Like, he's got money in the bank. 28.52, and just to put that in perspective, that is about eight tenths quicker than Jimmy Johnson's first lap. Matt? His brother Kale waving the Dodge Boys number nine sideboard. Casey pulls to a stop. Fifth and 16th, he's qualified for this event in the last two years. And you can see Nick O'Dell with a little light on his visor, a little more visibility, hit those lugs, hand-eye coordination, and he is away, 13 even. Smooth. Come on, get going, get going. Not a lot of wheel spin. No, but he, now he's got it, now it's going. Ooh, that looks fast out. Yeah. Hey, right there, yeah. 118, the fastest of anybody. The only yeah, place baby. he was a little bit off was on the entrance. He got out there on that pavement quick. I like it. He got money in the bank, boys. Yeah, we know he's got about a half a second in that first yeah. lap laying in the bank. Bring her on home, dude. You might have you something. Used to give you a lawnmower. I don't know what to give you now. <laughs> Crew Chief Kenny Francis looks on. Yes! Hey, that beat Ryan Newman last year at a 122.4. That's a 122.2. He beats Jimmy Johnson by seven tenths of a second. A lot of that was on the racetrack. Yes, sir, it was. The first lap. And this exit of the pits where he gets right out of the concrete as quickly as possible. Little spin right there, but it didn't take him. That's about what you do under a normal pit stop condition yep. right there almost. Started digging when he got about second gear down there. Thing really took off. And Dick is with a fellow who feels this is his house. Yeah, indeed, Jimmy Johnson and uh, great parking job. Did you ever think when you started stock car racing that parking was going to help you qualify better for a big time race? No, and I, I didn't know that I did a very good job. I just got in the pits like I do every week. Um, you know, I had a good solid lap, good solid pit stop. Um, I think my guys really made up some time for me. I was a little out of control out there on the racetrack trying to get a good lap for them. But a great team effort. Um, you know, it looks like we've been moved down to second. We'll see how uh, how we go from here. But great, great starting spot. Very proud of the race. Like his teammate, Jeff Gordon, this guy always comes to the top when they come to Lowe's Motor Speedway. Mike. All right, Dale Jarrett on the Speedway, the UPS Ford. Dale in his 15th All-Star Challenge. You know what we like to do on Saturday nights and Sunday afternoons? Just reach up there and crank those knobs as wide as you can. Sure, let's crank it up.
things happened there on the left side. A little slow getting the jack up on the left side. Tire changer was ready to pull uh, before the jack was already up in the air. The wheels spun coming out. He got control of it, and then they spun again. And just a little lackadaisical getting to the pit box, too. Didn't seem like he was just running in there as hard as some of the others have. Now that's car chief Jason Burdett, who will be actually acting as the crew chief for this 88 team this weekend and the next three races. Slugger Lavery, the crew chief after the rear sway bar mounting infraction at Richmond, lost the appeal this week, suspended for four weeks, including this All-Star weekend. Not a bad effort. But here, it takes a really great effort to be in the first half of this field. And right now, Dale Jarrett sits 12th. Well, on the free side? Yeah. A little loose. Here's our final qualifier. Last year's winner, how appropriate. Mark Martin, this year in the AAA Ford Fusion of Jack Roush. Well, that thing took an ugly look getting into turn three there. Probably just tire heat. He'll be all right now. He's in his 17th All-Star Challenge, the most of all active drivers. He also won it in 1998. See him having to play with that yeah, relax it. it a little bit off turn two. It's like he's, a, he's like a lacking a little front grip for me. 196 miles per hour off into turn three. Just a okay lap, just to put that in perspective, Casey Kane, 28.52. And that's a pretty darn quick. Yes, it is. Dude, that's getting up there close to 188, 189 miles an hour. Mark does a little bit what Michael yep. Waltrip did earlier, up the racetrack in the middle of three and four. Boy, it's going to cause him to really come in hot, a little wide there, too. I'll tell you what, that was a good entrance time, oh, though, you're gonna, 9 if, if, you're, if you're willing to give up and get up high like that, you're going to get a good entrance. <laughs> Mark slides to his steps. The car was loose on the racetrack. Ziegler and Bowen go to work on the front. Enderly and Smith on the back. How'd it look on the right side, Larry Mack? Just, just nice and solid. Just not real fast, but no mistakes, Matt. That's how it is on the left side. And the time, 13-8. Pretty good launch off pit road for Mark. Yeah, that looks pretty good getting out. Whoa, Mark. 115. Remember, Casey Kane was 118. He There's Casey her, right he there. He turned her sideways down there. I know that. Worked. Might have picked up a few tents there. Yeah, 116, 117 has been pretty solid getting off pit road until Casey Kane did the 118. And he had a good entrance time as well. Casey Kane did everything right. But look at Mark, the pit stop and that exit going to move him from 12th coming in to 6th right now. And that's where he'll be. He's the fastest Ford at 6th. And Casey Kane has won the pole for the next Hill All-Star Challenge, Dick. And congratulations. Anything you could have done better in that run? I don't know. I felt like I could have lost a little getting to pit road, could have lost a little leaving pit road, but you never really know. And I know the lap was good, and the pit crew did an awesome job again, uh, run second in the, in the challenge this week, and, and just had another great stop. So we're pretty excited. De definitely uh, the Dodge Dealers UAW Dodge Charger was, uh, was very good. Congratulations to you. Mike? It's his first pole in the All-Star Challenge. Last year, he started fifth. This will be his third trip. Won the pole last week at Darlington. And Jimmy Johnson, right there. A lot of Dodges up there in the top five. Yeah. Casey Kane, Kurt Busch, and Kurt Busch's teammate, Ryan Newman. I believe it's going to be really important, and, and like so many races, but again, to start up front. I think that's the hot tip this weekend. Bittersweet night for Ray Evernham. He has both ends of the grid, first with Kane and last with Mayfield Stan. Plus, he's got a truck on the outside the front row. With yeah, Aaron Crocker. Aaron Crocker on the outside of the front row with a truck race. Wow. Our truck boys are over here. They're just licking the chops, ready to get on the air. The truck race is next. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series lives on speed. Tomorrow, weld that tuner to FX. Our All-Star Night coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot of fun, music, surprises. It's going to be a great night with the Nextel All-Star Challenge. They're going to turn this track pretty quickly because we know you're waiting impatiently for the truck race, as are we. 
Tracks fast now, boys. Be a great race. Oops, so one lug nut penalty on Mark Martin. That will move him back from that sixth starting spot. We got so many elements tomorrow night. We got new pavement. We got a hard tire. We got small fuel cell. We got inversion. We've got a 10 minute break. It's the reason they call it a challenge. No, but you left out the most important part. A million dollars to win. That's right. Casey Kane, 12th different driver to win the poll for the next Nextel All-Star Challenge. We'll see you tomorrow night. We're trucking next on Speed.